Hey Code Crew, in this lesson, you're going to start building the iOS Notes app that is going to connect to the web server and database that you set up in the previous lesson. If you haven't seen that lesson yet, I'll link to it in the description below and on a card on the screen. By the end of this lesson, you'll have set up the user interface for the app, the data fetching through your API and being displayed in that user interface. And just like in lesson one, Ali will be your teacher. Ali, take it away. Right now that we've got our actual server done, and we can create, read, update, and destroy various notes. The next thing we're start working on is our actual iPhone app. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing I do is open up Xcode and create a new project. And it's going to be a single view app. And you can name it anything you want. Let's call it Note App. And we're going to be using Swift and Storyboard. And you don't need to check anything else. So you can save that wherever you want. And then let's make that full screen and jump into storyboard. So in our storyboard file, the first thing we're going to do is add a navigation controller. And what a navigation controller allows us to do is handle navigations. So for example, on the main screen, I'm just going to have my list of notes. And then when I click add note, I want to go to a different screen where I can add the notes. And once I added the note, I can go back to the main screen. And the way you do that is by using a navigation controller. So on your main view controller, click it and go to editor and you're going to see embed in. And when you see the embed in button, click navigation controller. And this will make a navigation controller. So when, so now what you want to do is make sure when you click on the navigation controller that it's set to is initial view controller. Now we've got that. We're going to add one more view controller and this is going to be the adding the note view controller. So just type in view controller and it'll come up and just drag that view controller onto your screen. Now what we want to do is get both of these views set up. So on the first one, we're going to add a bar button item. So just search bar button item and drag it onto the top of the view controller on the top right. And this is going to be our add new note button. So if you go into the, if you go into the attributes inspector and change the title, you can just call this add note like that now if we also click on the actual blank space we see the title button the title label we can just set that to notes so now we have notes and add note now what we want to do is option hold option and drag the add note button onto the view controller the second one and once it asks you for action segue click show this will actually make another a navigation bar on the second view controller and allow us to navigate between the two different pages now what we're going to do is add a table view, this search for table view and drop it on and set the constraints to zero on all sides, zero, 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 zero. And what this is going to do is actually stretch the table view across the screen. And now what you want to do is add a table view cell like that. We're going to start customizing the cell later, but just have it, just drop it in here for now. The next thing you want to do is focus on customizing the adding note screen. So on the top, we can change the title to add note like that. We also want buttons to save. So if you search for a bar button item again, you can drop in two this time. So we can add a button to save. So just double click the button or set the title by clicking on it to save. And the other button will be delete. You can also change the text color by clicking on it and changing the tint to red for delete. So now you got the delete and save button. Now what we're gonna do is add a text field and you can just drag it onto the screen and you're gonna click the little constraint again button on the bottom. You're gonna set the top to 15. That'll give a little bit of padding between the actual text field and the navigation bar. And we're also gonna set the sides to 10 and 10. Uh, again, we want to stretch all the way, but we want to leave a little padding. And we're not going to mess with the bottom constraint for now. So we can see there's a little bit of padding on top and left and right. Now we're going to add something called a text view. And it's the same thing as a text field, but you can add multiple lines. Because in a text field, there's only one line you can enter. In text view, you can enter paragraphs. So now what we're going to do is set the constraints on the text view. We're going to set the top to 15 and the sides to 15 as well. 
So that'll stretch it across the screen, but leave a little bit of padding like that. So now if I run my app, so if I click the play button and run it, I should see the two screens and I should be able to navigate between them. So my app launches on this table view. And when I click the add note button, it goes into this screen. So in this screen, I can write stuff. I can write stuff. And also up here, I can write a new note. And these buttons don't work right now, but eventually they're going to save and delete. And when I click the notes button back here, I should go back to the main screen. All right, now that that works, let's actually start writing some code. So now what I want to do is actually be able to interact with the table view programmatically. So I'm going to click the little plus button on the top right. And it's going to give me two screens. On the first screen, I'm going to open the view controller. And on the second screen, I'm going to open my storyboard. So what I'm going to do is click the storyboard, hold the option and drag it onto the view controller. And it's going to say insert outlet. So I'm going to choose outlet and I'm going to call this main table or I'll also call this notes table view like that. So now I'm able to programmatically interact with the notes table view. I also have to conform to something called a protocol. I'm going to add a comma after UI, UI view controller and I'm going to type in table view delegate, UI table view delegate and I'm going to click on that. So the next thing I'm going to write is notes table view dot delegate is equal to self and notes table view dot data source is equal to self. And what that means is I'm telling the storyboard that this view controller will be providing the data for this table view. So now it gives me an error says cannot assign and it says add missing conformance. So click fix on that. And it's going to add also the data source protocol right there, data source delegate. And now what happens is it says the view controller does not conform to the protocol. So what you're going to click is fix. And what the fix will do is give you a couple of functions and these functions are functions you have to answer so the table view knows what to display the first one is number of rows so if I just write return 5 and on the next function where it says cell for row at it's asking me to customize the cell and what to display for the cell let cell equal to table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier dq reusable cell with identifier for index path so we have to give our table view cell an identifier so if you go back into your main dot storyboard you click on the prototype cell you'll see it says identifier so we can just call this prototype we can just call it prototype cell and what that allows us to do is actually reference this cell so we can customize it so now we're just going to type the name we named it. So we named it proto type cell. And then for index path, we just give it index path, which means the cell we're clicking on. So this could be the first cell in the row, the second cell in the row, the third cell in the row. And the reason can be error because index path should be lowercase like that. Now what we're going to do is say cell dot label and we can say note and we want to return the cell so what we've done here firstly is created five cells the next thing we've done is we've created a prototype cell using this keyword table view dq reusable cell and we're customizing that cell and returning it so once we actually start getting our notes array we'll actually customize each cell with a certain note but for now, we're just hard coding each cell with the string note. And the reason it's giving me an error when I write cell.text label is because I write cell.text label.text. And that'll allow to set. So now if I run this app, it should give me five rows, and each row should say note on it. Like that. Okay, now our app is getting there. So now instead of hard coding the word note onto each cell, I want to actually pass in an array. And I want it to render each element of the array as a row. So let's create an array first. I'll call this notes array. 
And for now, let's just make it an array of strings. So we can write note one. So that'll be note five, note four, note three, and note two. So now what we're gonna do, so instead of writing cell label, cell dot text label dot text equal to note, we're gonna set this to notes array to the index path dot row. Now when I refresh this and I build it onto my iPhone, I see I have the array of notes now. So if I add a new note into the array and I refresh it, I don't actually see the new note when I click that. And the reason that happens is because I'm returning five. I told it I just want five rows, but now we want to have an, as many rows as there are elements in our array. So I'm just going to write notes array dot count. And this means it's going to return as many rows as there are things in my array. So if I just build this now, I'm going to see I have six notes. And if I just double this array now, so if I just copy this array and paste it, I'll have more notes now like that. All right. Now you can see how instead of having an array of strings, we would actually have an array of actual notes. And every time the user adds a note, we add it to the we add it to the database. And then every time the user wants to see a note, we just ask the database to give all the notes back and we put it back in the array. And then the table view refreshes itself and displays all the notes that are in the array. All right, now that we're done the storyboard part and we have our table view and it can display an array. The next thing we want to do is actually get our data from the server. So remember when I type my URL and go to fetch route and I click enter, I get this data back. Well, I want this data to show in the iPhone now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install something called Alamo Fire. So if you just type Alamo Fire GitHub, you'll get the link to that. So you just have to copy this and what Alamo Fire does, it makes it really easy for us to contact the server and send and receive data. So just copy that and go into your Xcode project, go into files, Swift packages, and click add package dependency. And then just paste the link and click next and next and finish. So that installed Alamo Fire so we can use it in our project. So the next thing I'm going to do is make a new file. So I'm going to right click on my folder, click on new file, and I'm just going to make it a Swift file. And I'm just going to name it API functions. And this file will actually be the file that contacts the server and receives and sends data. So I'm just going to make a class and call it API functions. All right. So now what's going to happen is the iPhone needs to ask the server to send back this data but we need to define an object so the iPhone knows what a note looks like. So we know a note has a note, a title, and a date, and ID. We have to tell the iPhone that a note holds these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a struct. So just type in struct and call a note. And the note has a var title, which is a string. A var date, which is a string of our ID, which is a string, and of our note, which is also a string. All right, so now that we've defined a notes object, we can get the data from our server and we can turn it into a notes object. So the iPhone knows what a note looks like. And then we can just say, give me the date title of this note or give me the date of this note. And it'll give us that information. And we wrote var ID as a string, but in our actual data object, we know that var ID is actually called underscore ID. So it doesn't matter too much, but just to be consistent, we can change this to underscore ID. So now what we're going to do is we're going to type import Alamo fire, and that allows us to actually use Alamo fire in our project. So I'm going to make one function so I'm, and I'm going to call it fetch data or fetch notes. And it returns nothing. 
So in our fetch notes, we're going to write af dot request. And we're going to pass in the string we want it to go to. So the string was what we typed in our browser right here. So just copy that and go into Xcode and paste it. And we're going to write dot response. And then we're going to put two curly brackets and type in response in. So what this means is we're going to make a request to this server and we want the response. And then once we got the response, the response in keywords allow us to actually access that data. So I could do something like print response and it would print the whole response the survey sends me back. But we only want the data the server sends back like the note, the title, and the date. But the response object also holds things like print statements. It holds times and it tells us if it failed or not, but we don't need that information. So we can just type response.data instead. So that'll only give us back the server's actual data and we don't need the under, other information. But now what we're gonna do is gonna write let data is equal to the string and the data will be response.data and the encoding will be .utf8. And what that allows us to do is turn the data and you can just force unwrap it with exclamation mark. What that allows us to do is turn the data the server sends us into a string we can actually parse and the encoding of that is UTF-8. So that basically allows us to convert this data the server sends us into this object we defined here. And we have to make one more change to this object. We have to make it a decodable. And that basically means we can decode what the server is sending us into this object so we can access it and use it. And now what I'm going to do is create a delegate and protocol method which will allow us to send this data over to the view controller once the server sends back the data. So we're going to call this function to fetch notes. It's going to go to the server and it's going to receive the data. And once it receives the data, we want it to send this data that it took back to the view controller so we can update the array. So the way I'm going to do that is create a custom protocol and delegate. So the way we do that is go back into our functions, our API function class, and we're going to write self dot delegate dot, and I'll just name it update array, and I'll take in a new array, and the array will be data. We haven't defined this yet, so it's actually giving me an error. But in the view controller, we're actually going to define what this update array method does. And it's giving me an error because it said it doesn't know what a delegate is. So we can just write var delegate colon data delegate and data delegate question mark like that. So that'll remove this error, but it still doesn't know what the update array method is. And that's what we're going to work on next. And the reason it's giving me the error saying unuse of undeclared type data delegate is that it doesn't know what a data delegate is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the view controller. And right here, I'm going to, outside of the class, I'm going to define what a data delegate is and what it does. Somewhere protocol. And the protocol's name is going to be data delegate. So it calls a function called update array. And that function takes in a new array, which is a string. So now if I go back to my actual functions file over here, this error, if I go to product and click on clean build folder, it should remove that error. So now it knows what data delegate is. So now what happens is this function fires off it goes to our fetch route and it gets all the data it turns the data into a utf8 encoding which will allow us to easily parse it into this note structure we made and then it calls this delegate and what this delegate does is it tells the view controller to fire off this function called update array now we haven't defined this function yet that's what that's what we're going to do right now 
So outside of the view controller class, I can write extension view controller, and then I'm going to write a colon data delegate. If you don't want this, you could also write a function inside your actual class, but this makes it a bit cleaner. It just means that this block of code is a part of the view controller. And what it's doing is it's conforming to the data delegate protocol. Just like how we had the UI table view delegate and the UI data source delegate. And because of that, we had to answer these two questions, right? How many rows we want in our table and what we want in each cell. This time we're conforming to the data delegate protocol. So we're going to have to answer this question and the question will be update array. So what we have to do is update the array. So now what we're going to do is we're going to define this function called update array. So I'm just going to type func update array and it auto completes. It takes a new array, which is a string. And now in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a do try block. So you have your do here and it's going to try something and if it fails you can catch it and then you can print out the error so usually if we do something without the do catch block what's going to happen is if it fails the app is going to crash but due to this if it fails it'll just go in the catch block and it'll print out the error without crashing the app and what we're going to type is notes array notes array is equal to json decoder dot decode and self is going to be the array of notes so now what we're going to write is notes array is equal to try json decoder dot decode and we're going to try the array of notes dot self and what you're going to type is from new array dot data and then you're going to get the you're going to get the autocomplete so just click on the first one and using the encoding we're going to use is dot utf8 like that and what we're going to do is we're going to add an exclamation mark at the end of that and then in the catch block we can just print failed to decode. Now the next thing is this array that we've defined here called notes array is an array of strings, but we want to make it an array of notes, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to clear out the text inside here and we're going to write note and we're going to add two round brackets. And what this means is that's an array of these note objects we defined over here. So the note object has a title, date, an ID, and a note. So now we have a whole array full of them. And we're also going to add two round brackets after JSON decoder, like that. To me, one error it says use of unresolved identifier notes. Well, because I defined it as a note, not a notes. So I'll just remove the S over here, like that. And the next thing we're going to do is that it says cannot assign value of type note to string. So we have to customize ourselves correctly after this. So we're just going to hash this out right now. And we're actually going to go back to our API functions file over here. So first of all, we have to force unwrap it. So just click on the error and click the exclamation mark. We're also going to write one more thing in our API functions file. So write static let functions equal api functions with two round brackets and what that does is actually creates an instance of the api function class so now we can access the, these functions from outside of the class so now the view controller can actually call these functions to get and receive the data now the last thing we're going to do is go into the view controller and on the view to load we're going to write just like how we had to tell the nodes table view that the delegate was the view controller we're going to write api functions dot functions dot data delegate or delegate is equal to self so now the api functions class knows that this function update array is being handled by the view controller it knows who to send the data we got from the server to it's going to call the update array function which is located in our view controller 
So now that's done, we can actually try seeing if it works. So now if I in my view did load, if I write API functions dot functions dot fetch did fetch notes, and then I print the notes array, I shouldn't see anything on my screen, but I should see an array of notes and those notes should be the same notes that we get in our browser here. So if I just run that, let's see what happens. I'm going to see that it prints out update, updated, and it has the ID and the note, and also has title, date, and note. So if I go back here, I see updated, update, and updated. I see title, date, and note. So we know the iPhone is actually contacting our server and getting the data, and it's attaching that data to a notes array. So now I can use this notes array to show the data in the actual table view. Just like, just like how we did before with the array of strings, but now we have actual notes we can display. So now if I go back into my actual protocol of functions over here, remember when we asked told it how many remember when we told it how many rows we want and what the title of each row should be? Now the function is still the same over here, notes array dot count. So it's gonna print as many rows as we have objects in our array, so we have two in this case. But in the actual cell, when we're customizing it, we can now do cell label dot text is equal to no three index path dot row dot title. Let's say we should see the title of each note on our actual table view. So when we run our app, we don't actually see the data, but we know it's being printed here. And the reason that is, is because notes array at the very beginning is empty. So then we say return the amount of items in notes array. And when the app runs at the very beginning, the amount of items in notes array is zero. And there's also nothing in the array. So that's why it gives us the empty table view. And after that, these functions are called, which fetches the notes. And once it fetches the note, it updates our notes array, which is what we get here. But the table view is still using the old array instead of the new one. So at the end of this function, we can just write a line of code which says self dot notes table view dot reload data and what that'll make it do is that whenever we get a new notes array we're actually going to reload the data on the table view so always be updated so now if i build my app again we'll see that we see our update and title so now what's going to happen is if i go to postman and I actually add a new item in, and I restart my app, I should see the new item in my array. So let's go to slash create, and we'll pass in new item, new item, new item, like that, and I'm gonna send that to the server, and it says save data. So what happens now is if I go to my app and I close it and I restart my app, I just see my new data and there it is new item. So now we're sending data using Postman, but we're fetching the data using our iPhone app. So now the next step is to be able to send our data using our note, add note button here. So whenever the user types something over here and click save, we want to send that data to our actual server now. But the first part is done where we're actually receiving data from our server. So now you have your app connecting to the API, fetching the data and displaying it in the user interface. In the next lesson, you're going to implement adding, editing, updating, and removing notes. Now I want to turn it over to you. Have you done any web development before? Do you happen to be a web developer learning iOS? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for the next lesson. Oh yeah, and if you want to see more app series like this and courses on other iOS topics, then definitely check out CWC+. I'll leave a link to it in the end screen and in the comments below. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson.